in this video I'm going to show you how to make an advanced 2D platformer super fast. Let's get right into it. So let's get started by creating a player object first. So we're going to click add new object, click sprite, and we're going to name this player. Now we're going to put add animation, create with pistol. Now we're going to create a simple object. We're not going to add any animation to this tutorial. This is simply the fundamentals. I'm going to color this whole player red. I'm going to hit apply. And we're going to just drag him onto the scene. And I'm also going to add a new object, a new sprite. Name that sprite ground. And add an animation to it. Create with pistol. And we're going to do the same thing. Resize. Get the black. And just color the whole thing black. Now apply. And we're going to drag the ground onto the scene. We're going to click into it and then drag it out and stretch it. So we can have a full ground. And if we press, pre press preview, nothing will happen because we haven't added any behavior. So how do we easily add a quick advanced 2D platformer without programming everything ourselves? That could take really long to program all the features. Well, we're going to do a certain thing here. We're going to go into, first of all, Project Manager over here, Extensions, and we're going to go into 2D Platformer. Not 2D Platformer, just simply Platformer. And you'll see something that's about to happen here. Advanced Platform Movement. And shout out to D8H. Shadow Zero Zero Dev, Entropy, and Coriander Games because they are the ones that made this amazing extension. And we're going to install this extension in the project. And what are we going to do now? We're going to double click into the player, go to Behaviors, and Add Behavior. Now, we, instead of adding a regular platformer controller like we usually do, we're going to go down and add, um, let's just start off with Coyote Time and Air Jump because we want to start off by adding a double jump. And just how easy, I'm going to show you how easy it is. It automatically adds all of the platformer regular platform controls and we can control the jumps if i change the number of jumps let me change it to two and now i want to hit apply uh oh we forgot one thing my bad we got to add go to behaviors for the ground and put click platform ledgers cannot be grabbed and now we press preview and if we press up well space we can use that to jump we have two air jumps and if i want to switch this to only one double jump I can do this. I can switch number of air jumps to one. And just like this, we can make however many double jumps we want. So that's how you add a double jump. So how do you add something like a wall jump? Well, we're going to go back to player, behaviors, and add behavior. We're going to scroll back down. As you can see, we have several options. I'm going to put wall jump. And now we're going to scroll down where you see wall jump right here. And we want to set a few things. So slide acceleration. This shows how fast you accelerate on the wall. Slide speed, of course, it shows how fast you slide. Sl slide speed, su uh, sustain time, my bad. Um, it just shows the sustain time. This is all very self-explanatory, really, and jump detection frame. Oh, that's that also self-explanatory. All of this explains for itself. But you're going to play around with these eyes for now. We're going to keep them default, and we're going to make some other, some walls. So I'm going to drag this into here, and we're going to create like two little pillars that we can use to jump on to wall jump on. We're going to make them pretty tight. And now we're going to press preview. And as you can see, when I jump on a wall, first of all, I'm sliding off. I'm not just regularly falling because if I regularly fall, it goes down really fast. But now I can wall jump off each wall just that easy with GDevault. I mean, I, it's amazing. What can I say? Now, I want to show you how to add a few more things. Now, how do you add a dash to the player? Maybe you want to make kind of like a Mega Man X style game, something of that matter. How do you add a dash? So we're going to go back to the player behaviors add behavior go down and put horizontal dash now we're going to scroll down and if it's not down you can scroll up and go to horizontal dash and this shows all of the parameters we have i'd like a cooldown of 0 0.50 but we can set this whatever how we want the dash to be now if i preview i can see there's actually we can't dash we cannot actually dash and there's a reason for that because we have to assign a button for us to dash so I'm going to go to events, add event, and I'm going to put something. So I want my dash button to be, in this case, um, we press the letter M. So I'm going to go to other conditions, keyboard, key pressed, and then M. And now I'm going to put trigger once. We don't want them to be able to hold the button and keep dashing. So I'm going to put trigger once. And I'm going to put, go to click player for the actions. And then we're going to put... Um, we're going to put, we got to scroll down to dash, where it says dash. I think I can search this. 
yeah, simulate dash key. Go to where it says simulate dash key. And now if I press M, I dash. And of course, this is a very long dash. And it goes in whichever direction our keyboard is. But there's a very long dash. Of course, you can play around with the values. And you can set the dash to however you want. Now, one more thing before we leave this quick tutorial. We're going to show how do we do a ground pound. Like, let's say you want to kind of do like a ground pound how it is in Mario. How do we do a simple ground pound or maybe just a, a fast fall or a fast drop? We're going to go black, back to player. Behaviors. Add behavior. Now we're going to go to dive dash. Cause that's what it's called. We're going to go down to see if it's here. I don't see dive dash here. So we're going to go back up. And here we see. Well, I think I missed it a little bit. My apologies. Oh, we actually didn't add it. My Oh, dive dash right here. So dive dash. And now we have a dive dash. And now you see, we can't actually do anything. It's the same as a regular dash. We have to assign a button to it. I'm going to assign the button down so we can dive dash. Add new event. Add condition. Go back to keyboard. And put if player presses the down key. If player presses the down key, that means it will do a drop down. And of course, we can also set this to trigger once. So we can't just hold the button down. And we're going to do a dash. Well, actually, it's better not to set this to trigger once. And we'll see soon. But we're going to go to player. And we want to find where it says simulate a dive. Simulate dive key. And now we go. We jump. And I'm going to jump off the wall. And if I press down when I jump off the wall now, it does a quick little drop. And just like that, we've made an advanced 2D platformer in GDevault. Of course, you can make animations yourself using these simple um, actions. Of course, you may have to add a little bit more code. But this is the fundamentals and foundation how to make an advanced 2D platform platformer in GDevault. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.